Uh, Castleford, um, often been seen as your rivals, but are they an equal now? Is in a top four? Are they a, a consistent top four team now? Do you feel? Uh, if you talk about this year, for sure, of course they are. Yeah, they're in. The, they've got the league leaders' shield and, and been a standout, and you know, and done it comfortably as well. It would seem. Uh, if you're going to talk about consistent top four, add five, six, seven seasons to that, then you can talk about consistent top four. But certainly this year, they've been the most consistent team going on. Do you expect them to kick on from this? It's an interesting one. This hasn't come out the blue. This this version of the of Castleford that we see, uh, their offense has been extremely good for the last three, four, maybe five seasons, uh, and you know probably not as consistent as it's been, but certainly come up with some. You know when Luke Dawn was there, when Rangi Chase was there, they they come up with some stuff that all of us were picking and and pick and choosing what we wanted to copy off from Castleford type of thing, and their their defense backs it up. I also think they're playing with a level of confidence. People like uh, Luke Gale and Paul McShane have really nailed this year. Paul McShane in particular, I think. It's not that he's any fitter or any stronger or any bigger. It's just that he's playing with more confidence now and playing with a conviction that he's probably been lacking. So uh, so if you're asking me, will it continue? Yeah, I think it will do. I, 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 don't think this is, I don't think they're going to replicate what happened in 2017. I think this is a continuation of what started probably since that Given that you've all both already qualified for the semi-finals, do you think this game will be any different to the other three? Well, I I know they don't like us. I don't think anybody in Castleford. I, I meet some people from Castleford sometimes, and uh, they're uh, they're not shy in telling you what you think about Leeds. And uh, we've been beat three times off them, so you you might think there's not much in it this game because we're in the top four. But we want to secure a second spot, which we haven't quite done just yet, and we don't want to lose against them. And how much of a bonus is it for you that you have secured your playoff spot with three games to go? Yeah, it's good. It's good. I think this is a conversation for when the 30 league rounds are done. You can sit back and reflect and, and where we were last year to where we are now. Uh, is, uh, I, think, I, think it's, uh, I think it's worth talking about, but it, uh, I'll do that round 30. Yeah, does it maybe change your approach to the final couple of games? Because it's not do or die, is it essentially for you in the next three games? Not, not necessarily so. If I was, uh, if we had forty-man squads, and uh, and I could, I was resting twenty-three players every single week. I may, I may think right strategically. Let's turn it upside down and let's go play some blood. Don't have forty-man squads, and uh, there's there's about two blokes each week who don't play, and you know. Usually three or four of them are injured. We've got a couple of blokes at Feathers. I don't have a raft of players that don't play each week, so uh, but there's not much. Even if we had a, a really strategic thing to do for the last two or three, I wouldn't. I'd, we don't have that much movement in it. So uh, keeping form, maintaining fitness, uh, keeping injury free, not being erratic with what we do, and not losing form. I think. I think you know, not making sure that. You know what you're talking about there doesn't seep through to the players. You know the attitude of it doesn't really matter because we're in the top four now and everything's about the semi. Well, you don't want to limp in there. You don't want to be going into the semi off a couple of pawns. Can I ask you about Jack Walker? A lot of people raised an eyebrow when he said initially he wasn't going to re-sign with a club. He's had to wait. He's come back in. He's been fantastic. Do you see him growing as a person now? As he well hasn't as had to wait. He 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 was him that was waiting. We. I mean, he, he hasn't had to wait. He wasn't straight in the team, though, was he? He had to wait if Ashton was number one, and now he, he's That's shot right, back yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right, though, isn't it? Yeah, he had to wait for his turn in the team. Of course, yeah. Yeah, uh, but how impressed are you with how he's come in? Because his his performances have been fantastic. I mean, you wouldn't think he was of the age he is. He's uh, he's 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 continuing what he did when he first played. I think his first game was Saints at Apples, I think, uh, in the league. Few rounds ago now, and uh, it was it was one of those you think, hey, that's good that. And then he backed it up the week after, I think, played Huddersfield, and uh, <clears throat> you, I don't speak for everybody else, but I'm I thought, I wonder if you can keep this up. He's he's still only 18, 17 at the time, uh, and he's backing it up. He's backing it up, and it's uh, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting episode really because Ash Golden, I I rate Ash Golden, I think he's a very good fullback. 
defensively really, really good. And if there's anything you accuse Jack Walker's game of is that he probably needs to have a bit more bite about his defensive game, where Ash Golden has already proven he's an outstanding, brilliant defender. You know, ball and all tackles, saving tries. Did up at the Magic Weekend especially. So uh, it's not an easy decision to pick one over the other. And when you leave one out, it's not an easy conversation to have. But uh, I've got to tell you, Jack, I think Jack's conduct since he's been playing has been good. And, you know, some of that humility in and amongst Ash Golden, uh, you know, and the way they train with each other and the way that they rotate each other in the teams is very good. I also need to give Ash Golden a lot of credit because his level of humility I, it is humbling to watch. It's, it's great. You know, we, for such a young man, Ash, Ash Golden, to then have the to have this situation where where he's not in the team and it's right that he's not in the team Jack Walker's playing better at the moment uh, yet to conduct himself like he does with as much integrity and as much humility for such a young man I think that's great and uh, I'm not sure what the season holds for both those players and you know if we make <clears throat> the grand final who will play I, I can't predict that but I do know it'll be, it'll be the right choice Whoever gets picked up with the right choice based on performance and whoever doesn't play will be right behind the team. And that's that's a, that's a perfect scenario for me as a coach. You can't, you know, I, I should film it. Just show, show young young men how to, how to behave when things don't go your way. So uh, it's a great story of what's going on at the moment. And just finally, you made a few uh, comments about the play of the ball last week. Has anyone spoken to you about it? Do you expect anyone to react to what you said after the game with Bull last week? No, because I probably don't put it across with enough corporate gobbledygook. And because I probably speak a bit too frank, it just upsets a few people, doesn't it? Nobody takes me on. Uh, it's, uh, I don't regret anything I said. I think it's an horrible part of our game. I, I, don't, I don't know how you'd sell our game to, to randoms on that facet of the game. But uh, it was, it's the king and his birthday suit, some of the stuff that goes on. It's king and his birthday suit where people just, I'm looking at some things and it, I just can't work it out. And I'm looking round at some officials and some administrators and whoever's and referees and players and coaches and nobody seems to mention it. Uh, so I don't regret anything I said. I don't, I don't think it's a, a tactic whole use on their own. And I know we have I've been guilty of in the past. I think Brian Carney, straight away, I was told, I didn't see, Brian Carney flippantly quipped afterwards that, well, Leeds do this as well. Well, if Leeds do this as well, why does that make it any... It doesn't make it any more easy. And, uh, it, and I think I said in the interview, we're all guilty of it. But uh, nobody wants to talk about it, so let's just carry on and smooth over it and paper over that crack and just pretend it's not there. Do you feel you have a responsibility to keep bringing that up then? You know, um, so we got hammered last year. My team got hammered last year, rightly so, because we we were not square at marker. Uh, yet, yet at the same time, I'm recognising that players would move off the mark to play the ball. So they'd move off the mark to play a play ball, which would be a yard to the side of our first marker. Then they'd play at the dummy half and pick up and run, and our first marker get involved, and we'd concede a penalty. So if you freeze frame it and ask us, will we, will we not square at marker? The answer is yes, we're not square at marker, but there's a reason for it. And after a bit of an inquiry, there's a recognition that, yep, they are from some people. Yeah, they are playing it off the mark. Nothing gets done about it. So whether this is good to hear or not, so I had to coach my players that when that player moves off the mark, you've got to both run sideways and go stand where he plays it. Now, you go look at too much footage that we had last year, but I've got Adam Cuthbertson and Jamie Jones and Carla, but just stood there, almost like a beacon on purpose, saying, I'm not moving. It's them that's moving. Can you not see this? It's them that's moving. It never worked. Uh, so, uh, so I've had to coach my players the wrong thing to catch up with where the game's at. Now that gets me. That's hard. That's and this is another thing that I'm seeing in the game where if it's if they're finding it tough to get out there, just let go of the ball. And this another wrong thing that's happening in the game. My I, my uh, prediction is that I'll just have to get on with it and make sure that we 
peel peel away from the player on the ground as almost like they're made of eggshells and not allowed to touch them in case they d decide to lose the ball. Yeah, I feel responsible for it. I do feel responsible.